This is the tutorial to sh show you how to install RabbitMQ in Windows in the manual way, right? RabbitMQ is an open source message broker. So click on get started, download plus installation, and shuffle ID or installer. You also need to open this binary wheel. Okay. So first thing is that RabbitMQ is actually um, requires a dependency called Erlang, right? And if you can see um, here, right, Erlang supported version. And you can see if you're installing the latest one, you need Erlang version 24, right? I tried with Chocolady, it installed the latest RabbitMQ, but it installed the Erlang version 10. So I've done it now with the manual way, right? So just go Google um, Erlang 24, download, and click this one, 64-bit binary file, and I already have it here. And I'll open that, right? So I'm going to go ahead and um, click Next, Next, Install, and it uh, should be pretty fast, right? Um, and then what we can do now is maybe exit this tab out and show you the next installer right um, which is just down here right the rabbit mq dash server which is the latest one in that .exe file right i already have this downloaded so let me just quickly go to my downloads folder and i have it here right let's see if this finish it's done and we'll just install this as well okay next install so as you can see, both of them are pretty fast to install. So a common gotcha would be here is again, like, you know, setting up your environment variables and uh, doing the commands. So, okay. Now that you have Erlang and RabbitMQ, we can now uh, go close this, right? And let's go back to the binary build, okay? So first um, you'd want to check if Erlang is uh, in your program files so go to C program files Erlang is here great the next thing you want to check though if it's in your system environment variables right environment variables and Erlang home great we have that as well so it's pointing to the path okay so we're good with that Next is, okay, this is done, okay. We installed the RabbitMQ server, right? And um, next we would want to uh, basically uh, make sure, right? Sometimes we do have um, error where the cookie is not the same. So you can quickly verify the uh, cookie from the server side right for the server side uh, go to the same one um, and then sorry your C drive uh, Windows and go to system 32 then go to config and then go to system profile and this is the server side uh, Erlang cookie you may want to if again you would see this problem you can copy this and you would want to open up let's say another file explorer and now you would want to have the same uh, cookie in the client side so to go to the client side just go to windows drive c and go to your uh, program files and look for the erlang and go to I think binary and then nope Erlang cookie so to check it from the client side again sorry uh, Hmm. 
Now to check the uh, cookie on the client side, it should be a C drive user, Clark, and this is the Erlang cookie. Again, you may want to update that if you run into some trouble. Um, so next that we want to do now is to configure the system environment variable for RabbitMQ. So let's quickly head back and configure that. Let's put this on the side so we can copy paste stuff. So it says that we do want this RabbitMQ server variable name. Click new. Click that variable name. Now look for the the path. So program files. Er, oh, not Erlang anymore. We're RabbitMQ. This folder and okay. I think that should be good. And paste that in. Next is it says to uh, update your path. Okay, let's update our path, which is this one. And it says to add this one. All right, so it will use the path plus the SBIN. Let's remove that extra. Click OK. So now that's done. Uh, we can go ahead and check if it's um, properly working. Don't forget to run as administrator. Right? I have a few set of commands here on my left. Um, let's see. Um, it says uh, I can try to go ahead and check if this is working right away. Rabbit MQ dash plugins enable. Rabbit MQ underscore management. Okay, let's see, enabling it. Um, let's double check if I can access or do I need to. <clears throat> okay, so that already uh, means that the RabbitMQ service is running. You can check with services and you can just scroll down and go RabbitMQ, right? And you can stop or restart the service. You can also use some commands to do rabbitmq service start, right? You can also do the remove or install if you're having some problems and troubleshooting. So now we have this rabbitmq um, UI, and by default, it gives us the guest username and guest password. So, guest and guest. Click login, and you should be able to now see the UI and look around stuff, okay? So now you can start integrating your RabbitMQ to let's say your Spring or Node backend, okay? Thank you.